Good evening, Pax Christi. I'd like to have your attention for a couple of moments because we are um, undertaking a process to update our census information. The process tonight is only for those who are already registered as parishioners. There are two issues that we want to address tonight. One is that over the years, people's phone numbers may change, people's email addresses change, and you may not know that we do not have your current email address. And so we are asking everyone who is already a registered parishioner to fill out the cards that are in the pews. There are both cars, cards and pens. And as you see, our ushers are handing out the cards and the pens to everybody on the sides. This is for people who are already registered. You, if you are not yet registered, if you're new to the parish, you will hear in a moment how you too can fill out a registration card. The second issue that we are trying to address is families that have adult children on their registration here in our parish files, adults who live either away from here or who live at home with you. Our intention is that any adult outside of or beyond college age, register individually as their own adult registration. We would like to encourage that. But we are also asking you tonight that if you have adult children living at home and you think that they are listed on your census form, could you indicate to us whether they are still living with you? If they live out of the house? If they even live out of town? That will help us to get a better picture of the young, young adults of our parish. So those are the two things we're trying to address just even if you think, oh, they have my phone number, put it down. We may only have an old one. Oh, they have my email. Put your email down. We, it may be a new one. Name your adult kids, but name if they are at home <coughs> uh, or name if they have moved away. And encourage them to come and register their own selves as well. We're going to take a minute or two to let you fill the cards out fully. And then all you need to do is fold it in half, put it in the collection basket when the collection basket comes round. So let's take two more minutes to give everybody the time to give us a complete registration form uh, for our parish uh, database. Thank you for your attention to this on a cold and gray and rainy night. Good evening, Pax Christi. How wonderful it is to all be together tonight, this first weekend of Advent. My name's Lisa James, for anyone that I haven't met. I'd like to invite everyone to please rise. Greet everyone around you. And if there's someone beside you that you haven't met, please introduce yourself.
I'd like to extend a warm welcome on behalf of Pox Christi Danu visitors that are here with us tonight. We're so glad to have you. We have a welcome table set up in the, this side of the Norfolk. You'll see it by the big welcome sign. If there's anyone here that's considering joining Pox Christi, we would love to have you. There will be somebody there after Mass to answer any questions, and you'll find registration information there. Let's start the celebration. Let us together sing number 42, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, in your new hymnals. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Amen. Just remain standing, and we will bless the Advent wreath. Let us pray. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light this, these candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Let us pause for a moment and tell Christ we're sorry for our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. 
Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds, we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father 
and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home, places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming whether in the evening or at midnight or at the cock crow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. But I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sort of a hurt gospel. Watch. You know, all the readings have water, watch or wait in them. Uh, Jesus in the gospel, it says watch at the end. Paul says, as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Isaiah says, no ear has ever heard or no eye has ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. So it's all about, you know, waiting and watching and, you know, don't you get tired of that? I've been doing this for about 70 years. You know, last week we had all Jesus Christ, King of the universe, the end of everything. We start over today. We start from scratch. And you know what? That's a gorgeous Advent wreath. And you know, as far as far watching, little kids are watching and waiting for Christmas, aren't they? It seems like it never comes. Uh, and then little kids, I can't wait till I get into school. And then big kids, I can't wait to get out of school and go to the university. I can't wait and get some money and get independent and get a job. And we're waiting in traffic. You know, it's watching and waiting, and then we just keep on doing this over and over again. And don't you get a little tired of that waiting and watching? And I'm, 
I'm probably the worst guy here in traffic, especially if the West there's a jam up. And I need to get over here. And I'm on that circle. Stopped. Drives me crazy. But this Advent wreath, with that nice circle, the, the beginning of God is ever. No beginning, no end. Just circle. Hmm, nice. God is the way, creator of life and is totally alive and always green with life like the cedar, the evergreen. Hmm. Jesus Christ came, sent for the Father, who is the light of the world. The two biggest things that we do at Easter time with is the Easter candle and in the bonfire out there and the light, and then we use candles all the time. I don't know about you, but I love candles. You know, in the morning and when I do morning prayer, you know what I do first? I light a candle. I take all these old candles that you have here, I'm cheap. <laughs> and I light the white ones, you know, when they get about this big. And I love candles. I don't know why, but maybe because of, I like birthdays and birthday candles. And, and in studying in Austria, the people are nuts on candles. They light the mountains on fire on uh, All Souls Day. They have so many candles and they go into the cemetery and the light. And you'll see fires all over the Alps right there in Innsbruck where I study. And it's really devotional. And I, in the evening time, if I sit down there before I have a drink, if we were in the evening time, you know what I start out doing? I light a candle, one of those dumpy candles that I steal. <laughs> but I, I just think, and here, I mean, here you can see the, the fire. How many times have you had those can, those uh, jars or those uh, glasses and you light them, and the second Sunday, they light them and you can't even see them. Drives me crazy. <laughs> if you're going to light a candle, light it. And look at it. And if you can do that, like, you know, Christmas tree. I, I haven't put up a Christmas tree in 10 years. Somebody gave me a Christmas tree, an artificial Christmas tree, with 400 lights on it. Well, I have a, 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 a crib set, and I really like that better than anything, and I usually use that, but this thing has been in my basement for 10 years now, and I said, and you know, all of my box elders or whatever, they, they all burn up or frostbitten and so forth, and I took half of them out, the, the other ones are terrible. I had a lady statue in, in the middle of the front yard and so forth, and I took her down this week, and I took the, the 10-year-old artificial Christmas tree and took it out there and stuck it right in the middle and it's got lights all over it. It's, I am so happy. <laughs> it's not as good as a candle, but I'm so happy with that. It's real simple. It's a tree about this high with 400 lights on it and it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. You know, waiting. I'm tired of waiting. Impatiently. And I don't know about you, but I, I just find it. Here we go again. We're starting over again. It's a happy new year. This is the new year. The church calendar. We over and over and over again. You know my uh, favorite parishioner? You all think I'm pointing to you, don't you? <laughs> Gertrude Smith, Tuesday a week ago, she was a hundred, and she's still a, a, just a beautiful person, you know, when's God going to take me? I bet she's so sick and tired of waiting. <laughs> and then I think that uh, uh, Gertrude, she says she's, she's, she's got to go sooner or later. And then I think, Larry, you're 84. My God, you don't want to do much longer to go yourself. <laughs> and, but I'm not going to, I know I'm not going to make it to 100.
but I'm going to wait another year. I just had my annual exam this weekend. The guy, the guy says, you're really good. And the, the week before that, I had an echogram. And he says, you're really good. He says, you're 84. And he says, I'm going to watch you for two years. You're really good. And then after two years, I'm really going to watch you. Because you have a heart murmur. And sooner or later, that thing's going to blow. He didn't say it that way. <laughs> but, but that's what he meant. And, and then oh, no, I'm waiting that. I'm waiting two years on that. And he says, I'm not even worried about you for two years. But he says, after two years, I'm worried about you or not. I'm concerned about you. And we're going to watch it more. Because I belong to this executive medicine at the University of Kentucky for the big deals to give all the money. My old doctor is one of the four of those doctors. And the other two doctors quit on me, retired. And said, I'm back there and I'm at the university. So whatever you do, I go to an expert. If I got a dirty ear, I go to an expert and get it cleaned out. If I have a heart murmur and I did for 30 years, I go get it started out two years ago, every six months, get it all checked out. And this doctor, I like him. He says, you're in good shape for a heart murmur. <laughs> he says, you don't have to come back here only every, every year now for a couple years, not every six months. I said, well, that's good. But waiting, waiting, you know, waiting for Godot, a low play, waiting for Godot, waiting for God. We are waiting for God. And we wait and wait and wait and wait. And it seems like over and over and over again. Well, do you really believe you're waiting for God? You know, that you're going to get your 84, 85, 88, 90, Gertrude, 100, 100, and she'll probably be around coming to my funeral. But we're waiting for God. We're waiting for the world to take on the message of Jesus Christ. And now, we're, now we've got two more wars going on. And we're waiting to get, to get the, you know, the captives and the prisoners and waiting for that to end. It seems like we're always waiting. Yeah, we are. But the message of Jesus is don't just stand there, do something. Love. Forgive. Help. Interact. Make things a little bit better. Well, we do it again. But I would recommend one thing, and I'll stop here. During this Advent, crack out a candle sometime and just sort of settle down and light it and just settle down and think about waiting over and over again, another Christmas, another spring, you know, and so forth, another birthday, another anniversary, and just sort of soak it in. There's a lot of good stuff that does happen around Christmas time. People are very good, I think. They're warm and often more loving. It can be worse, <laughs> worse too, but uh, you sort of light a candle and just sort of look at it, or sit at, around. Um, I, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I don't think you'll be disappointed. We have done many, how many Advent blessings, wreath blessings have you gone through? And we're starting again. And we've got, how many years do you have to go? Many, I hope, I believe. But we really do need to sort of, what's it all about? And what it's all about is God. And what is it all about? It's Jesus, who is God, has become one of us. And what it's all about is we are all connected and we're heading somewhere into the kingdom of God. And we do our little part in it. Half of it's waiting, half of it's trying to say, what am I, I'm going to do something, 
and maybe another half of it is, you know, these halves. I am going to do something, but eh, take advantage of this season, huh? You got a great wreath here. Burn one, one of those candles at home sometime during this day. If you don't like that idea, these are always really good. I don't know if you take some of these in there in the, in the back. They're little meditation type things. But, but that's the homily. And I bet you're starting to say, I can't wait till he gets finished. <laughs> Please stand, we'll say the creed. I believe in one God. Father, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. As the church begins a new liturgical year, let us give our voice to our prayers and petitions. That the church remind us of our mission in the world and reflect Christ in word and action. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who lead nations may seek peaceful and just resolution to conflicts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have strayed from God and struggle to know his love may find their way home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our faith community may strengthen one another in our Advent journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that in the busyness of this season, we received the perfect gift of Christ's hope in moments of prayer and reflection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those in our parish who need prayer and all who are suffering share the cross of Jesus and may also be anointed with his joy and grace. We pray especially for the eternal joy of John Jack Sauerborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Be with us, loving Father. Aid our efforts of faith-filled waiting. Be with us as we ready ourselves for your coming. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us sing together number 68, Creator of the Stars of Night. Your people's everlasting light 
Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of the church. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly, devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. For Christ assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. So with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Christ took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, all the clergy and laity. Remember also all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's offer to one another some sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
As we receive the body and blood of Christ, let us sing together number 39, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a good evening. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we go forth rejoicing, let us sing together soon and very soon. Number 580.